Hey folks, this is Martin from the photoacademy.eu and on this video I present you the DxO Film Pact in the new version 3. You can use it like I use it right now as a standalone and you can use it directly from the Lightroom, from the Photoshop and the Apple Aperture as well. Yeah, you have some options here. You can open an image if you use the program as a standalone, or you can use the option batch processing if you have a stack of images. It's uh, very easy to use the same setting for a stack of images by using this batch processing. Yeah, and what is it, what this program can do for you? As you can imagine, film pack, that's meaning you have a bunch of, of presets from the old film days. All these presets you can see right here uh, from the color positive film you have a lot of them and on the side you have some controls as well you can open them or you can hide them but let us start from the Lightroom I have this image here and um, I open up the shadows a little bit to have the option for a great contrast black and white. Um, I can recommend this to do if you want to do some uh, high contrast effects, something like that, that you have a little bit of details left in the shadow areas. And this is the reason why I pushed the histogram a little bit more to the right side and open up a little bit of the shadows. Yeah, where can you find the program inside of the Lightroom? It's here in the File Plugin Extras DxO Film Pack. And Lightroom is exporting the image into the program. It'll show up a bit of the batch processing here if you want to use a, a preset directly from the import I have not only one image so I cancel this up Yeah, okay. you can. <coughs> yeah, where can you find the program? It's here under the file, plugin extras, and there we have the DxO film pack. Lightroom is exporting this image into the program, and it'll open up right now. So. Um, now you can see the presets with a preview on the thumbnail. You have the most used films here from the good old days, the film days, like the Fuji Velvia 50, Sensia 100. Um, you have a lot of Kodak, Ektachrome, Elite Chrome, very nice films to have it for the sunset or sunrise. You have Lomography as well um, with a bit of grain, Polaroid, and the great 690 Polaroid or the 669 Polaroid. Nice effects from that. You have 
not only the color positive, you have color negative as well. All the Aqua, Fujis, Kodak, and also the Lomography. You have cross processing, two dif difference. The most important thing for some of you maybe is the custom presets. So if you find something after you open up the controls, you can save this as a preset, your own presets. You can change film effects, etc. And what I use most of this program is the black and white. And here you have all the great old black and white films, some of the Aquas, one of my favorite, the Fuji Neopan 1600 with a great film corn. You have the good Ilfords, like I used most as the FP4 with a little bit of a low contrast and the HP5 with the darker grays and then the most popular in my time I use black and white films is the Pan F. It's a very smooth film with a 50 ISO and now you can see why I open up the shadows a little bit yeah, I have great whites in the clouds and uh, good darkness going on here in the shadows. And we can open the controls so that you can see the histogram. And uh, you can choose the RGB, the composite channel, the standalone channels from the RGB and the L channel the luminosity as well. I like this L to take a look on the on the highlights, what's going on from black to white. Yeah, and there you have a lot of lot more films here from the Kodak, the BW400. It's a bit of a lower gray, not so contrasty. The Tri X from Codex, the 400, it's very great film as well, especially if you use it in the analog camera. You have Polaroids and uh, some of the Rollies. You have IR in the 400, it's not so good for this image, <coughs> it's much better on the other landscapes images and for uh, portraits take exam for example um, I mostly use one of the Ilfords, the FP or the HP. The reason is the low contrast, it's very good and smoothie for the skins and if the film corn is a little bit too much, too heavy for you, you can change it here. You have a slider for the graininess. And uh, what do you have? You can use the Pan F <coughs> for now. You have some standards, but I never use the standards from the beginning. First I go into the preset and then after that I open up the, the panel, the control panel and doing my settings for the sliders. You have tonality, the intensity of the film. That's uh, quite nice to use. And um, the filter effects like um, a red filter in front of your lens and you can lower or raise up the density of this filter effect. Of course 
the higher effect is not so good for this image, but um, a little bit of a, of a red filter is great for landscape. You can uh, do a little bit of toning, like um, ferric sulfate, gold, selenium, sepias. I love the sepia terra. And the intensity you can change as well, like all the other sliders. You have basic settings. Um, this basic setting, especially for contrast and exposure, or for the color effects, you have a uh, saturation. It's great if you're starting up with this program without using Lightroom or Photoshop or Aperture. As a standalone, this program, that's great to have if you import in JPEG, something like this. You can uh, change the contrast. Otherwise, I change the contrast inside of the raw converter. But you can do it inside of the program as well and go into the savings after that. You have a channel mixer. That's great and helpfully to have. Darken the, the yellows for this, darken the blues maybe a little bit. Lighten the cyans or darken the cyans. It's up to your taste, what you like most, if you want more dramatic. It's a very fast way to change the settings for for this. Um, if you're using JPEGs directly from the camera, you have a option to change the noisiness of your image. You have noise removal here for the lumens and chrominance. You can change the film grain. So for this special film, we have a 50 ISO. There's not a lot of grain going on. Uh, like the hand tool, waiting for the processing. We have a little bit here, and you can change these th settings up to your taste. What I like is the size. You can choose between the normal 36 full frame or medium large format or custom format. It's uh, good for your resolution that you can change this and the, the film grain will change in the reason what you are choosing here for the film format. So I mostly use the 36 full frame and you have uh, vignetting as well for this. Yeah, I think this is a great tool to have. As I said before, you can create a preset for your own taste. This is margin one, black and white. You can save this as a preset, and then you have it here in the custom preset with all the toning, the contrast, etc. Or you can go in and choose the reset. If, if the image is not up to your taste, you can change it. You can go back to color settings as well. It's no problem. You can change all what you want. It's a little bit like in a raw converter. Yeah, I think it's uh, very handy to use. It's not so many controls you can choose. You choose your film, what you want to simulate, then you can choose the preview. If you want to have a split preview or side by side, you only have a before and after tool, a hand tool, and your zoom. A little bit of a navigator. And after everything is done, you can go in and say save. And we'll coming back to the Lightroom where you have the image. So we start from Lightroom and we are going back to Lightroom. 
after the processing is done. Yeah, this is it. Thank you, Lightroom, for this presentation of uh, this program, the XO Film Pack. It's stacked with the first image. Yeah, this is it for me. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Goodbye.